thank you so much for joining me once again here at the Art Life YouTube channel. I'm here to provide some really fun, exciting art lessons for kids of all ages. So come with me today and I'll help you to create something inspired by the artist James Rizzi. And it might look something a little like this. Now, James Rizzi was a fantastic artist from New York City and he absolutely loved the city that he lived in. And he would actually portray New York City in most of his artworks, but in a really fun, bright, vibrant, almost comical kind of way. He wanted everyone to see the happiness that he saw in New York City. He'd often paint cityscapes just like this one, but they're a little bit abstract, aren't they? They're bright. And often, some of the buildings have faces. And that was just to bring them to life and help everyone else see the happiness that he saw in New York City. So come with me today and I'll show you how to create a James Rizzi inspired cityscape. Kind of like this one. But it's a really fun opportunity not only to create a nice fun drawing and uh, learn some drawing skills, but also to put our personality into an artwork like this. And that's exactly what we learn from James Rizzi. That sometimes art can be fun, it can be exciting, and we can just have a play and enjoy it. So come with me and I hope you really enjoy this happy task. Now, I promised you a special announcement that's gonna come up later in the video today. So after the activity, I will announce something super exciting that hopefully you'll find exciting too. Okay, all you need for this task today is a piece of white, cartridge paper. Today I'm working on A4. However, when I did this with my grade five students, I did double the size. So they all had an A3 piece of paper. And this lesson took two double periods. So um, two times 90 minute lessons, I suppose, for an A3 size. The other things that you'll need for the task, firstly, you'll need a Sharpie or some sort of permanent marker. This is to do the drawing. Uh, you can choose something that's a little bit finer um, obviously a sharpie is going to be nice and bold, um, but it needs to be permanent. You'll also need some water and a brush, I'll tell you why later, as well as some water soluble markers or textures. Today I'm using Artline Sticks, these are fantastic because uh, they have quite a thick sort of brush point and they're fantastic to, to use, the kids absolutely love them. However. A Faber-Castell uh, connector pen will also do the trick. All right, so the idea today is to create a cityscape. But this cityscape does not need to be realistic, doesn't need to be boxy like you'd imagine a normal cityscape would be. Today we're going to be creative and a little bit abstract because we want to bring happiness into our art just like James Rizzi used to. And the way we can do that is through things like expression. That means giving our buildings, personalities, faces, things like that. Another way you can add happiness is through objects. A great way to make this really personal as a task is for students to add in objects that make them happy. You know, simple as drawing in a hamburger. Is that something that makes you happy? Some kids did things a little bit more obvious. Um, it's completely up to you and up to the students and that's why this task is just so fantastic for creativity and self-expression. Now the idea of today is to actually make your artwork quite busy, quite detailed. I relate it to a Where's Wally or a Where's Waldo kind of page because the idea is to fill the page with as much detail as possible. Obviously neat detail, but we want to cover the entire page with fun things. Now, the idea today is to not show happiness through words. That's too obvious. It'd be, it, it would be so simple to show happiness through writing words, but today let's try to steer away from words and try to show it in other ways, in more visual ways. So I'm going to guide you step by step 
how to create something like this. But I would expect that your work and the students' work would actually look really different to mine. And I found when I did this with my grade five students, every single artwork looked really unique. And that's what's great about this task. You really get to put your own individual mark on the task. And I can tell you my grade five students were super engaged. So grab your materials and let's get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna to do today simply is draw a nice straight line down the bottom of your page. You may use a ruler if you'd prefer. Now this just kind of creates a bit of a horizon line and we're not gonna do any buildings just yet. We wanna do something in the foreground, which means the front. So giving our work a few different layers. Now you can do whatever you like in your foreground. I'm gonna choose maybe to do some trees, flowers really make me happy. So that's my sort of personal touch. Whatever you're drawing, try to draw neatly. We want to know what it is that you're drawing. Now remember it is a city. So you might choose to add in things like taxis to make it a little bit more urban. Or you can simply put some characters or people here. Some students in my other class actually <laughs> decided that this line would be water and he had some sea creatures like octopus um, tentacles and things like that coming out of the horizon line. So that was a really interesting interpretation and you have the freedom to um, have a go at doing something like that as well. Now, I'm working a bit smaller today so it doesn't take as long. However, obviously something a bit bigger will um, you'll need to devote a bit more time to it. But it's really relaxing. I say to my students, you know, a drawing task like this really is fantastic um, for your mental well-being. Um, it's a very mindful task because you're really just focusing on one thing at a time. And I find that creating a drawing like this with such detail is fantastic um, for relaxation. And I find that the students are so engaged in the task that they don't really um, care to necessarily talk to other students. They're focusing on their work and how to make it as interesting as possible. Notice I'm not just leaving my bush here um, really plain, I'm adding different details. And that's what this task is all about. What can we add? Okay, so I've done my foreground here. A few different details just on my road, I suppose. So now I'm gonna do my next layer, which is going to be my buildings. Now I suggest doing about maybe five or six buildings. We don't want them to be too small that it's hard to add details such as windows and expressions. We also don't want them to be so big that um, they take up so much space and it's really difficult to add details. So let's have a go now at drawing some buildings. Now, the instinct I suppose is to do something like that, but let's be a little bit more creative today. Your buildings, they do need to look like buildings. However, they can have their own personality. I'll show you what I mean. So use a ruler if you like, but again, it's really not super important to be perfect. There we go. And that's my, the outline of building number one. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit abstract and crazy, but that's completely fine because this is not a perfectly realistic task. I'm gonna now have a go at something a bit different using some different shapes. Think about the type of shapes you might choose to use. And they can defy architectural reality as well by using some curvy wobbly lines. These are just the outlines, remember, we're not done yet. Okay, fantastic. The next detail I'd like you to do is just add some shapes to the top of your buildings. Like that. Makes it a bit more futuristic as you can see. Okay, 
Now, we're going to add expressions. So James Rizzi, as you can see in his cityscapes, a lot of the buildings he brought to life. It was the vibrance of New York City that he absolutely loved and he wanted to put a face on it. And so the expressions that he would use were generally fairly happy, excited, sometimes shocked, but often quite silly. Um, so get creative with expression, as you can see there. They can all look a little bit different. <laughs> it's a bit weird. Now notice I haven't drawn in a pencil first. Sometimes if we use a grey lead, we can really overthink our work and just end up rubbing it out and getting more stressed out than we need to be. A task like this is meant to be fun. And so I, I really encourage you to just wing it and do it with a Sharpie. And you know what, if you make a mistake, then sometimes that's the best opportunity for a challenge to turn it into something that looks like it was meant to be there. That's the next step, just drawing some expressions and you can see that they all have their own personality now, which is super fun. Okay, now we're gonna add detail to our buildings. Now that can come in the shape of things like windows, but you know, you could be sort of basic with it like this and just draw your standard square windows, which is completely fine. Or you can really mix it up a little bit, have fun with shapes and lines. Remember, it does not need to be realistic. You could draw people inside a window. Um, I hope that I'm getting across that this type of task is um, super creative. And so copying isn't showing a lot of creativity. Um, and so I really encourage you to use the steps and strategies I'm showing you, however, to really turn it into something of your own. And if you have chosen to do that, I'd absolutely love to see it. I would love it so much. So if you could please tag me at artlife.mel, this is my Instagram account. And it's an awesome way for me to see what you're doing in your schools or at home. Sometimes I often repost some um, really awesome artworks and ways that you've used the lessons that I'm showing you here on YouTube. So feel free to tag me um, or send me a message here and um, it'd be great to see what you're doing. Cool. Now that the buildings are filled, it is time to add detail everywhere else. Now, I don't have a lot more space on my paper because it is a small piece of paper. You might have more space on an A3 artwork, but just as I've done here, you know, fill these areas in the sky and around sort of the background area full of information. There's also more space down here I can add information. It's important to stay nice and neat and not be messy. However, you're thinking of things now that you love, things that make you super happy. For example, I love the sunshine. So I'm going to draw a big shiny sun looking super happy. I want my day here in the city to be a really shiny, happy one. James Rizzi loved to draw birds. They kind of look like this. So little characters, fun things. If you love ice cream, it can be flying in the sky. And this is what makes your artwork interesting and just like a Where's Wally, picture because there's so much information and the more you look at it the more you see and the more comical and interesting it can be so take this opportunity now to really think of things that are quite funny um, that can add a bit of humor and character to your work this is um, particularly what the grade 5 boys really loved about this task that they could put their own little piece of their personality within their task Yay. 
day. What do you think so far? Well, I'm happy with the level of detail in this so far, so I'm gonna move on to the next step. And now that is adding some color because color definitely adds happiness. But today we're not gonna color the entire thing, especially if you have a big A3 piece of paper that will take forever. So I'm gonna show you something that is actually fantastic for um, different tasks, especially if you're a classroom teacher and you want to add color to a task without it taking forever or being messy, this is a fantastic thing. This is a fantastic thing that you can do. So you could either choose to sort of just outline the section. I'll show you sort of a few different strategies. So I'm sort of just outlining my the bush here that I've drawn. Okay, that's sort of one way. Another way is you could just choose to just color in parts, just little sections, adding little splashes of color like that. Now you need some water and a paintbrush. Now adding water to a water soluble marker or texture actually allows it to turn into paint as you can see here. So it's almost like using watercolors. And so I'm just spreading the color around my section here. You might sort of need quite a small brush for the detailed areas, but there, took no time at all. And it looks great, especially um, when the whole work is done. And it's super mess free. Now this second sort of strategy you can see is a bit more even with its color, I'm sort of just spreading the, the paint around my section. It's super important um, to not overwork the area. What I mean by that is if you just keep rubbing the water, the paper will actually start to wear away and disintegrate and you'll start to find that it goes a bit bally. Um, once it starts to go a little bit bally, you need to move on to a different section just because the paper will actually start to tear away um, we, and we don't want that to happen. So it is important to use sort of a thicker cartridge. Um, I wouldn't just use sort of photocopy paper or anything. You need something a bit thicker to be able to withstand the water. Now in saying that, I would actually add all the color first and then use water later. I just want to sort of show you the effect that you can get. Most of my colouring here, as you can see, um, it's quite messy and it's the type of colouring I wouldn't normally accept within my art room. However, it's going to look great. Um, so don't worry that there's gaps and things like that. Uh, notice I've also not done the finer details. I haven't done the windows or the hearts or the roses and things like that. I'm just doing the bigger areas for now because um, I don't want the colours to sort of mix or get confused and things like that. So I'm just going to work one section at a time now to add my water and then once it's dry I'll go back in and add colour to the finer details. painted the entire thing um, and it didn't take very long at all. Um, this strategy is fantastic if you're lacking time but I am going to let it dry because some of these details like the windows and the love hearts and things like that in the background I'm wanting to bring them out and make them more obvious with colour. So I'm going to colour them in but my page needs to be completely dry. That shouldn't take too long really only about five to ten minutes so I'll be back soon. Awesome, so I don't need the water anymore. What I'm gonna do now is just make a few things sort of stand out that need to stand out. For example, all these hearts here, I'm just gonna color them in so they stand out against the blue background a little bit. So now I'm just going in and coloring in a few things that I'd like to stand out. Maybe just tidying up a few bits and pieces that I may have missed. 
but I could keep going forever and ever because of all the detail on my artwork here. But I will stop there um, and hope that you agree that this artwork is super happy. It was really fun to create. And I think the outcome is really awesome too. So it's as simple as that. I really hope you've enjoyed learning all about James Rizzi today and having a go at creating a cityscape inspired by his artwork. So I did promise you an announcement and here it is. I'm having another baby! Yay! So I'll be due in October. So that's probably uh, gives a bit of reason as to why I haven't done as many videos lately. I've been a little bit unwell. But hopefully I'll start to feel a bit better. I'll be able to make some videos for you in the future. So I will actually, if you're interested in the next video, I'll upload my gender reveal that we did. Um, and so if you'd like to know if it's a boy or a girl, you can tune in to the next video and you'll be able to see there for yourself. Thanks for joining me today. I always appreciate having your company. Please make sure that you like, subscribe and comment below because it really helps me to continue to make fun videos for you. Have an awesome day. See you later.